As always, our show is brought to you by Memoria Press. Check out our full line of classical Christian education at memoriapress.com. In some states, there have been efforts over the last five years, six years to impose restrictions on homeschooling. And and we just don't feel that uh, there's any reason to support that. There's no need to put additional restrictions on law-abiding citizens exercising a fundamental right that they have to direct their children's education. Welcome to the Homeschool Journal, a show that unpacks the joys and journeys of the classical homeschool family. Here's your host, Carrie McGraw. Welcome back to the Homeschool Journal, friends and families out there. I have a rather exciting show today and a rather exciting guest. In fact, I've kind of admitted that he might actually be my very first guest to ever truly almost intimidate me and make me nervous. Mike, are you there? (laughs) I'm here and I am (laughs) laughing because no one's ever said that to me before. Can you come to my house and say that to my kids? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. Wouldn't we all like that, right? <laughs> Everyone, we have with us Mike Donnelly of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. He is senior counsel for HSLDA and the director of global outreach. And he has a bio as long as my arm. And so we're going to get to know Mike just a little bit first. But Mike's here today to help us focus on our homeschool freedoms. And what it means to be free to homeschool, Um, not just here in the United States, but I'm hoping we get to touch on some international um, issues that have been going on, you know, for many years, but maybe some more more recent ones. And Mike is the expert in that area, particularly for HSLDA. So, Mike, again, thank you for being here. I'm ever so grateful. Well, Gary, thank you for thinking of us and this topic. I'm just delighted to to be with you to chat today. So Mike, I, I told everyone your position at HSLDA, but let's expand on that a little bit. What does that mean to be the senior counsel, the director of global, global outreach? What does your day-to-day job look like? Well, it's it's pretty busy, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, you know, I, I handle uh, affairs for our members in seven states. So I have a legal assistant who helps me with that. And then I have two assistants on the global outreach side, uh, which keeps us very busy because, you know, with 200 countries and, you know, millions of people wanting to homeschool around the world, there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of work to do to encourage and equip people, uh, families and leaders, really. A lot of the work I do is working with uh, leaders in countries looking to set up organizations Mm -hmm. because homeschooling is not Uh, widely acknowledged in a lot of places. And when you talk about freedom, you know, we have an incredible freedom here, Carrie, in the USA that I'm not sure people really appreciate uh, when you compare it to places like Germany or Sweden in Europe or, you know, other countries around the world where parents are not allowed to homeschool at all. Mm -hmm. Or if they are, it's so restrictive. Um, and the government has, you know, its its fingers in there. So everyone, you know, uh, Mike is is one of these incredible individuals that keeps his thumb um, on this, not just for us here at home, but helping those across the globe um, just instrumentally in their own um, fight for freedom to homeschool. And so, so Mike, again, thank you for all that you do. But Mike, you are also a homeschooler yourself of seven children. And so I'd love for our listeners and viewers to hear all about your homeschool journey, if you would share that with us for a few minutes. Well, I'd be happy to. I was not homeschooled. I went to public school in a small town in New Hampshire, Uh, graduated uh, from there. Uh, I went to college, joined the Army. Um, served in uh, Desert Storm way back in the day in 1991, uh, got out of the Army, went to law school, uh, and then started a business. And um, I met my wife, uh, Patty. We've been, we'll have been married 30 years this year. So we're celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary. Yeah. And um, very excited about that. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do to celebrate 30 years. That's awesome. Um, We're behind you. We're at 27. Yeah. We're behind you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm getting that a lot more these days. Uh, you know, when I ask people and when I speak at homeschool conferences, which I do a lot, in fact, this weekend I'll be in North Carolina 
speaking eight times and it's, you know, it's a very busy schedule that I have, but uh, I ask how many people have been homeschooling for more than 20 years and it's fewer hands that are going up. And so I'm feeling <laughs> old, but <laughs> anyway, um, so we, but my wife and I, we, we've been married for 30 years, but we've known each other for over 40 because we went to the same schools. And in fact, Beautiful. we grew up in the same church. We were brought up Catholic. We're not Catholic anymore, but we were brought up in the same church. So we've known each other since, uh, you know, I was 13, she was 12. And, uh, and you know, we ended up getting married in 1992 when I was in the army uh, and, and have had seven children. Uh, they're ages 24 to 11. Um, Wonderful. And, and, and we've homeschooled pr- pretty much the whole way. We had a brief, brief, very brief detour Uh, When our oldest was six, we tried out Christian school for like four months. Mm -hmm. And that was really more my wife's idea because, you know, she was pregnant with our fourth and, you know, she was tired and we have four boys. And, uh, you know, you know what they say about the mother of four boys? Oh, you know, she's at it from sunrise to sunset. Ha ha. Uh, anyway, (laughs) (laughs) if if the sun ever sets and that never does with four boys, (laughs) I tell you what, anyway, but, uh, so, so I'd never heard of homeschool. Uh, until we had had two of our kids going on our third. And I had a, a, a neighbor, we were living in Boston, Massachusetts at the time, which is where the business was that I was working on. And, uh, we, you know, a guy around the corner, he was my running partner and we were out running one day and we were coming back and he's like, Hey, uh, you know, your kids are getting older. What are you going to do about school? Getting older. And, I said, and now you look back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and they're three years old. I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, and I said, I don't know. They're not going to public school. Uh, I don't know. Christian school, maybe, whatever. He's like, have you ever heard of homeschooling? And I'm like, uh, homeschooling? No, what's that? He's So he was homeschooling. They were homeschooling right around the corner. I had no idea. And he explained what it was. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I'll have to, I'll have to check in with, uh, you know, Patty ab- about that idea. But it sounds very interesting. Anyway, long story short, we prayed about it and we tried it. And, you know, my wife, uh, you know, she tells me that her dream as a a kid was to be a mom and a teacher. And she went to college and she was a teacher actually in elementary school. And so, you know, I, you know, can say I made her dreams come true. She's a mom (laughs) and she's a homeschool teacher. So, yeah, there we go. So that's kind of how we got started. And from, you know, it's been 25 years or so, and all of our kids are, you know, doing reasonably well. And mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's been a great journey. Well, and, and the point being, Mike, you know, when, when you walk the walk and you talk the talk, you know, you look at where homeschooling has brought you, Mike. I mean, uh, you know, that <laughs> yeah, many years later. Yeah, LDA. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so folks, he, you know, as Mike mentioned, he served in the United States Army during the Persian Gulf War and started a, a, a I think it was a private practice for a while. Then, you know, then you're in HSLDA, and we are all benefiting from uh, this gentleman. And so my my hat's off to you again, and my gratitude for all that I know that you touch and do um, behind the scenes, you know, because, and, and that's really what I want to talk about today is that here in the United States of America, and you touched on it already, you know, we have this great freedom to homeschool. And and so, but but what does that really mean? What does it mean to have the right and the freedom to homeschool um, here, let's start here in America. Uh, Mike, can you can you help us look at that and define that? Well, I think we have to start by realizing that it wasn't always free, and it wasn't no. always something that was recognized as a right. Even though That's I right. think I would say, I'm sure you would agree that, of course, parents should have always be considered to have the right to homeschool their children. In fact, when you look at the history of our country, that's how kids were educated at the beginning yes. of our country. They were taught at home by their parents primarily. Um, and we had a highly literate population uh, yes. in the early days. And, uh, you know, compulsory public school is a recent invention mm-hmm. and a fairly recent phenomena, um, which I don't, think has gone particularly well, but we're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about homeschooling. Um, but, uh, but, but the fact is that compulsory public education crowded out homeschooling starting in like mm-hmm. the 1850s or so. And there was virtually no one homeschooling for many years. There were still some people who did it, but it was very rare. 
until 60s, 1960s, 1970s, you had progressive sort of liberals saying, eh, we don't like the government institutions. And then you had the Christians saying, eh, we don't like these public schools anymore. They've kicked God out, no prayer in school, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. We want some, both, both sides were looking for something different and they found it in this thing called homeschooling. Homeschooling. And, and then, you know, but, but, but there were all these compulsory school laws, which said you had to send your kids to school and homeschooling was not an exception, except in five states where mm -hmm. it was recognized either through the constitution or through some court case. Um, and so people who wanted to do this had to, to go against the law, basically. Right. But people did do that. There were hundreds, thousands of parents who said, you know what? I am the parent. It's my place, my choice, my authority. God has given these children to me uh, and not to the government. And so I'm going to do what I think is best. And they did it. And then mm -hmm. some of them got in trouble. A lot of them got in trouble. Uh, all of them did it knowing that they could get in trouble in many places. And, and this so, really wasn't very long ago. You know, this was 1980s. What, 80s? No, we're talking the right. 80s. Yeah, we're talking right. 40 years ago. No, no, yeah, this is like two generations ago. Not long at all. And that's about the time when HSLDA got started in 1983. Mm -hmm. And it was about 20 years or so of legislative court battles all over the country. Yes. Until in 1996, finally, Michigan passed the last homeschool law legalizing recognizing homeschooling as a legal alternative to compulsory school atten attendance in 1996, around there. And, and, but even, even up until that time, homeschooling grew. I mean, even in the 80s, there were hundreds of thousands of children homeschooled. In, into the early 2000s, you, we crossed the 1 million student threshold. And mm -hmm. into, you know, just even seven, eight years ago, about 1.5 to 2 million. Of course, what's happened in the course of the pandemic when they shut down the schools and everybody right. went home, you know, homeschooling doubled or tripled. And yes. it seems like it is maintaining that high level of interest and, cons it, it and persistence. It does. And I've seen, yeah. I think the last figures I saw was we jumped from like 5% of the, of the nation's schooled children to almost 11%. Is that something like what you have seen? That's what the Census Bureau is reporting. Exactly. Those <laughs> numbers. Yep. And I think those numbers are actually only from 2020, um, you know, so, and, and we right. haven't seen much of a leveling off. Um, so, but you make a, a great point here, Mike, and you're making the point exactly that I want to talk about. You know, it was the 1980s and I came into homeschooling, it was the early 2000s by the time I had children to homeschool, but it was the mid 90s when I started researching uh, personally what was going on in the public education system at that point in time it was called outcome based education if you remember that terminology mm -hmm. um and and had decided that's not what we wanted for our family um at, when we you know brought children in later <laughs> um but you know it, it, i remember coming out of that era i remember um the groundwork that was laid state by state by state in securing freedom to homeschool. And I remember the parents that went before me that who dealt with local authorities um, who tried to tell them, you don't have the right to homeschool, you know, who really tried to reach into the home. And, That's and right. so I, I really want parents that are so new to homeschool because we have so many of them. We've just talked about how we've doubled, you know, in this nation. Yep. To realize there was this is not the way it always was. The freedom that we enjoy now is hard fought. The freedom that we have right now was not free. Um, so many went before us to forge it. Here in Kentucky, there was a a group called the Christian Home Educators of Kentucky, and they laid the groundwork for what is, I think, one of the freest states, if that's the right terminology to use. I think so. Um, you know, here uh, in Kentucky. And and we should look at that, be grateful, and be willing to hold on to it. And so one of my other questions is, you know, Kentucky, I feel like, is one of the ideal settings. Is there an ideal setting that defines the freedom to homeschool? Because not every state is the same. Well, they're not the same. And I think yeah, I'm not sure that there's any one ideal. Um, you know, there's different factors um, about homeschooling. I mean, your own individual family, the community, uh, 
you know, but from a le- from a regulatory perspective, if you're getting at the aspect of regulation, mm-hmm. uh, we do have a very a very broad and diverse uh, set of regulations across the country. I mean, mm-hmm. ranging everywhere from you know, if you look <laughs> if you look on at hslda.org slash laws, you can get a picture of what the regulations look like. Yes. We we kind of um, color code and grade states based on low regulation Mm -hmm. to high regulation. And, you know, you see the red states where we consider high to be high regulation and you'll see Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, kind of the Northeast. Um, And then, you know, across the country, you'll see mostly other states that are green or kind of a a lower Mm -hmm. level of regulation. Um, There are a number of states, 13 or so, where homeschoolers have no obligation to have any interaction at all with the authorities. Don't even have to tell them that they're doing anything. Um, okay. You know, in Kentucky, I think you file one notice. We just file, right. And then you're once. done. But, mm-hmm. you know, other, and there are a number of states that are like that. Uh, but there are states like Texas uh, and uh, Kansas or Oklahoma, Illinois, Indiana, even New Jersey, for example, Connecticut, uh, where homeschoolers just homeschool. And they just do what they do and that's it. There are other places where, you know, you have to file a notice or you may have to file multiple notices, do assessments and things like that. So, Mm -hmm. so I think, you know, I like the fact that we have a federal Republic where we have 50 States that do things differently. I think that's healthy. Uh, You know, as a self-governing country, we need to be able to do things differently in smaller locally and local. Exactly. And locally and uh, at the state level, that's kind of how it is. And I think that's fine. Um, you know, we think less regulation is appropriate. Um, mm-hmm. There is no really need, in my opinion, I think in our opinion at HSLDA, to impose burdens on parents who are exercising their fundamental right to direct the education of their children. And so mm-hmm. Texas, which has no requirements, we think that's fine. But if a state, through the democratic process, the legislative process, comes up with a law that's different, okay you know, that's fine. We're going to advocate for more freedom uh, Mm -hmm. as much as we can, because we don't think that it's necessary to impose restrictions on families who homeschool. So that's what we try to do at HSLDA. And we look across, and we're always watching. And that's one of the things we do at HSLDA is we are always watching state legislatures. We review thousands of bills every year Mm -hmm. across a, a wide variety of categories and topics, not just homeschool, but we pay attention to immunization laws. We pay attention to school financing, college admissions, uh, work work permits, uh, uh, you know, early childhood education, parental rights, a whole host of issues because we know that those, those issues matter to homeschoolers. So we pay attention to them. And when, you know, laws are, are proposed that are threatening to freedom, we mm-hmm. oppose them and we inform people about them. And, and when there are laws that are um, advancing freedom, we support those laws. Perfect, perfect segue into something that I want to get a little deeper into. You know, you have just named several just topics, whether it's, uh, you know, vaccine mandates or just ways in which I feel like parents need to stay, um, stay on guard. Um, And we know that HSLDA is doing that for us (laughs) in many ways, especially if anyone out there has ever opened um, you know, got onto the website and looked at state by state, you know, all the things that you all are addressing, the bills that come forward and how you address that and what you send in and um, and testify otherwise or work otherwise. So thank you again for, for being on guard for us and with us. But, you know, there are so many ways in which, and, and I think other countries give us a really good example of this, and I'm going to bring one up and maybe you can expand on this for me. And it's, And I think it's France. Mm. And, you know, mm-hmm. I think it was um, August of 2021 that they they signed into law or maybe it finished going through their court system. Um, what was a really restrictive um, homeschool or, or they placed more restrictions on homeschoolers. And and but through that, you know, they used other methodologies. Um, if, if you'll. You may, you're welcome to correct me, but if I remember, you know, it was, it was Emmanuel Macron who, it was like in the 20, 19, or 2020, October 2020, I think it was, that um, he said, you know, he was going to fight extremism. And through that, you know, we end up with what is a very, they end up with what is a very invasive 
um, a law and that has restricted homeschoolers. Am I right? You are correct. Uh, primarily, I think I think it may have been a little bit earlier when Macron first okay. uh, launched his attack. Uh, it took a while, but yes, I mean he. That's exactly correct. He launched an attack on homeschooling as part of a larger initiative to combat what he called separatism um, and extreme Islamism in France, which, I mean, it may be an issue uh, for them to deal with, but the the fact is homeschooling has nothing to do with either of those issues. Right. And I think that's kind of my point is that was the entrance. Well, he pulled those, he pulled it in because he decided that he wanted to be like Germany and use the school system as a way to um, fashion children in accordance with his vision, okay? Mm. And, and, and that's very troubling for um, anyone, I think. But it's also the history of, of schooling in America. It's the history of schooling in Germany. Um, that philosophy that the state decides what children learn um, and the values that they learn is what motivated Emmanuel Macron's desire to restrict homeschooling. And really he wanted to ban homeschooling, but he mm. was not able to do so. Uh, homeschooling has been legal in France explicitly by law since 1882. Now, since 2010, the French National Assembly has passed a number of measures to restrict it because they have this crazy idea that homeschoolers are separatists, which is simply not true. It's not supported by any data or research or experience. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a convenient excuse for the state to advance more control over people, which mm -hmm. is what they want to do. Uh, and, you know, and just next door in Germany, they haven't allowed homeschooling forever, mm -hmm. um, basically. And if you want to homeschool and you're a German, you have to leave the country or be willing to go underground. And that and, is happening. It does happen. And sadly, I'm very concerned about what's happening in Europe, Carrie, um, because France is only one of uh, one country of a number of countries in recent years. And even just last week, England, for example, uh, the English government has proposed a, a, a new homeschooling regime where they are going to require homeschoolers to register that they're <laughs> homeschoolers. Right now in the UK, they have a law very much like uh, Texas or New Jersey, where you just homeschool. And if you're going to pull out, you tell them you're going to homeschool and that's it. Pull okay. out from school and provide an education for your kids. But the government doesn't like that because they want to know where every child is and they want to have data on every child and they want to stick their nose in your business. And that's mm -hmm. what they're doing. And it's not just England and France. It's other countries in Europe. Mm -hmm. It's not just Europe either, by the way. It's also Africa, South Africa, for example. Uh, there's a, a battle going on there, which I'm involved with trying to help the homeschool community there. So, you know, I'm involved in all these countries and other countries trying to help and encourage these, these leaders to fight the good fight. And I think there's a lesson for us, which you have hinted at, which is, you know, freedom comes with a, a, price. a price. It has to be defended. That's right. And, and well, I'm going to take a moment here and I want to tell everybody another thing about Mike is he has his own podcast, Homeschooling Around the World. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so, you know, if you all want to know, you know, what's been going on in these other in these other countries in these other battles, if you really want to grow an appreciation for what has been done here for us and what we need to defend and maintain, please listen to his podcast, Homeschooling Around the World. Um, it will really um, open open your eyes and keep you, like I said, you know, on guard. And I, I think maybe on guard isn't even the right word. I want our families to see this freedom as precious, as something um, to hold as precious and to to maintain and make sure that um, that we don't lose here bit by bit, because losing it can be incremental, not one big sweeping law somewhere. <laughs> It can be that, right, Mike? <laughs> well, it often is. In fact, here in the U.S., if it's going to happen, it will It'll likely be, be an incremental loss. Although there have been some, uh, at some points in the history of homeschooling, attempts by the federal government to impose really national restrictions on it. But by and large, that's less of a threat, although there are threats from the federal government, that's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Because education is a state competency, 
you know, and that's why we pay attention to state legislation because it has the most direct effect. But in some states, there have been efforts over the last five years, six years to impose restrictions on homeschooling. And, and we just don't feel that uh, there's any reason to support that. There really isn't any need for right. the government to be involved. There are laws that protect children. Those laws work. And if, if there's a need to address situations, those situations can be addressed. There's no need to put additional restrictions on law-abiding citizens exercising a fundamental right that they have to direct their children's education. Amen. Amen. So what should parents here in the United States be doing to make sure that we are protecting the freedoms? You know, stay abreast of information, I'm sure, is, is one of the things. And HSLDA is a huge help in that. But can you give us some, some really concrete action steps that we should, A, watch for, maybe things we should watch out for, but B, things we should do? Well, I think we've got to be organized. Um, the, the reason that homeschooling was able to advance is because homeschoolers got organized. Um, you, you, the, there, there is a, a reputation that the homeschool community has earned through its activism. Um, and legislatures around the country know that if you poke the bear, it's not fun. OK, <laughs> and the homeschool community is, is known as a bear in, in some places. Uh, and I've seen it. I've been involved in helping coordinate and organize those battles. And I've participated in rallies where thousands of homeschoolers have come out to capitals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, politicians generally don't like that. They don't like people <laughs> waving signs and chanting and shouting and getting in their face. And, and I'm not saying we should do those things. And, of course, whenever we do uh, approach the civil authority, our legislators, our elected officials, we need to be respectful. But yes. at the same time, there is a place for firm, loud advocacy. Uh, and, and only when necessary, but sometimes there is a place for it. Uh, so, so we've got to be organized and, and we've got to maintain organization. I can tell you that one of the reasons, and it really saddens me, one of the reasons that the English are suffering right now is because they're not as organized as they should be. Wow. And and, and uh, they're, you know, I, I don't want to be critical of, of them because there are leaders there who have tried. They were trying. Um, and have tried and are trying, um, and, and we all make mistakes along the way. But the, the, the forces that are against them have been working for the last 20 years, mm -hmm. and the homeschool community did not really, did, did, they don't have an HSLDA there. Right. And there doesn't, isn't a very strong uh, le legislative advocacy there. Uh, and, and so they're struggling to push back against this, this legislation. Um, and, 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 and that's why. And mm -hmm. that's why we have been successful here in the United States is because we have state organizations. We have robust local support groups that help maintain that information. Like your podcast, what we're doing right now is encouraging, equipping, getting the word out so people know, hey, Oh, I can learn more at HSLDA or I, oh, wow, I had no idea that this was going on in England or that homeschooling right. was illegal in some states in the United States. Wow. I, you know, we have to be informed. We have to be organized so that we can respond when our freedom is threatened. Mm -hmm. We have to be informed so that we know when our freedom is threatened. And, you know, there are probably some homeschoolers in the UK who don't even yet know that, um, you know, they're, they're, right. you know, le the legislation or what it means. Uh, and even in the United States, there are lots and lots of homeschoolers who are just not engaged, but they need to become engaged. And so what the people listening to this podcast need to do, because if they're listening to this podcast, they are engaged. That's right. They're not the ones that we need to be talking to. They need nope. to share this podcast. They need to tell their <laughs> friends. They need to share pass this information and pass it around and say, hey, guys, did you know that 20 years ago or 40 years ago, homeschooling wasn't even legal in the United States of America in most places? Right. Wow. Could that happen again? <laughs> Does history yeah. ever repeat itself? <laughs> I, yes, and it can. And and our our homeschoolers are already heroes in their own homes. Um, That's right. I, and and so you all are my hero out there. <laughs> um, and and so take that heroism and share it in this podcast or or Mike's podcast, um, and be informed like what what Mike says. You know, the other thing I think we need Mike is to to stay connected and realize in in a way that 
What happens here in the United States, and I'm going to speak here only about the United States at this moment, what happens in one state affects us all. Um, You know, if ground is lost in the freedom to homeschool and protecting the rights of parents in one state, just because it's not your state doesn't mean we shouldn't be concerned. Well, I, I completely agree. And, you know, there, and there are growing forces. There are growing voices, I should say, uh, calling out for more regulation of homeschooling mm-hmm. families. Yes. And we don't believe there is a need for that. And we are going to stand firmly against that. And we have, uh, you know, for just one example, Elizabeth Bartholet, Harvard professor who wrote um, a law review article a couple of years ago that made big waves and folks can go to hslda.org slash Bartholet, B-A-R-T-H-O-L-E-T, Bartholet, hslda.org slash Bartholet to read the book. We literally wrote a book in response <laughs> to her law review article and it's available. Mm-hmm. All the chapters are available online at, at that website and, and people can read about it. We, we took on the issue of socialization. She made so many crazy allegations about homeschooling Mm. that were just inaccurate in her article, but she also called for a state-by-state campaign to impose additional regulations on homeschooling. And folks, Mm -hmm. you know, these these law professors, these elites, these opinion makers, they train people who become judges. They train people who become legislators. And so they have influence, which is why we need Mm -hmm. to pay attention to them. And when they say something like that, we need to respond. And so we did. Uh, but there are voices who are calling for that. And mm-hmm. it's, they're growing. And they are, there are some people responding. And, you know, policy goes in waves. So we need to be ready. Mm-hmm. And we need to stay informed, engaged, and organized so that when that day comes, when it's in your state, or another state, we can stand up to those ideas. Because as Carrie said, it does make a difference. If, you know, Some people say, as goes California, so goes the country. Let's just hope we can keep pushing that bad idea <laughs> yeah, back, right? right? Because that's bad. Mm. Um, but you know, it does make a difference when one state passes something, other states say, hey, they did it, Yes. so can we. That's right. And it can embolden those who are on that pro-regulatory side. Uh, that that live in your state. Um, you know, I want to um, want to encourage everyone out there to consider <laughs> becoming a member of the HSLDA if you aren't already. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug you for just a minute, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, oh, um, yes, yeah, you're plug away, right? I forgive. Okay. <laughs> I forgive you in advance. <laughs> you know, I homeschooled for 12 years, and again, I'm gonna go back to the fact that I homeschooled coming off of years that I remember families that lived in restrictions. While I didn't have to, because we had an organization that went ahead of me here in this state uh, to secure a considerable amount of freedom, um, you know, I would not have homeschooled without my membership in HSLDA. It was like my insurance policy. At least that's what I thought of it as. Um, (laughs) And I remember there were instructions on if um, you know, someone from um, uh, the local services or the local school board comes to your door. Here is what you do. And Mike, I kid you not, I taped those instructions to the back of my front door because <laughs> I was going. You are to, not alone. <laughs> I was going to be ready, and one of them was, "Don't let them inside." You know, and and I and I'm not trying to paint a picture of gloom and doom. I'm really not, but that's just kind of the the person that I am. Um, my family motto is "Semper Paratus," which is always prepared. <laughs> And, that's a good one. And like that's it. what I was doing. And and while that's not how most of our homeschoolers live today, and I praise God for that. I praise God for that. Um, and I pray for our homeschoolers who are, like I said, our heroes in their home. I do want them to stay awake. I do want them to stay connected. And, and so I would encourage membership in HSLDA. I would encourage them to stay, you know, keep reading, keep, um, keep looking, and, and just stay abreast of what's going on and realize that we as homeschoolers, we are connected, particularly in this country, but what, what goes on outside is important too uh, for us to watch, you know, the maneuverings of a pro-regulatory uh, movement um, in, in another country. I'm um, here recently. So, Mike, any last final words of wisdom from you for our homeschoolers? 
Well, as the Bible says, in a multiplicity of counsel, there is victory. And it, mm-hmm. takes, it takes everyone to assure our freedom. I appreciate your mentioning membership in HSLDA because we cannot do what we do without right. the support of our dues-paying members. For, for the cost of a Chick-fil-A meal, you can be a member of HSLDA. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. on a monthly basis. So on a monthly basis, right. it's, it's an investment worth making in your family, your future, and our freedom. And I'll just say this, um, one of my favorite presidents, Ronald Reagan, I think he put it so well. Uh, when he said that freedom is never more than a generation away from extinction. We don't pass it to our children in the bloodstream, but we have to win it. Each generation has to win that freedom and retain it and then pass it on to the next so that they can uh, do the same. And so that's what we're doing and that's what we need to do. And so thank you, Carrie, for your interest. Thank you listeners for your interest. And let's do that. Let's defend this freedom uh, and pass it on to our children. Amen. Amen, Mike. I could not have said anything better. And of course, folks, that's why we have Mike on today. Mike, thank you so much for your time. And again, thank you for all that you do for homeschoolers across the globe. Thank you. God bless. Thanks for joining us today. If you liked our episode, click the thumbs up button below or leave a comment to let us know what you thought. It always helps us to know if we've helped you. You can also click the bell icon and subscribe to the show so that you can stay in touch. Then I'd love for you to share it with a friend. We have many resources here on this channel, so I hope you'll check those out too. I'm Carrie McGraw. Thanks for listening today, and I'll see you next time.